you are watching an OraCloud Plus Training as a Service video snippet. Snippets are concise, targeted tutorials explaining how to use, configure, integrate, deploy, and support Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications. Snippets are delivered via FAST, the Fusion Application Support Tool. FAST is accessible via the web at www.oracloud.plus. No more watching hours of learning past style videos to get to the five minute snippet you need. Learn Oracle's Fusion Cloud applications in minutes, not hours. Hello and welcome to the Purchase Agreements video presentation. This video is intended for beginners looking to learn more about Fusion's purchase agreement capabilities. It explains the what, where, when, why, who, and how of Fusion's Procurement Cloud Purchase Agreements application, or functional work area. This video snippet, as with all or Cloud Plus video snippets, can be found within FAST, our Fusion Application Support Tool. It's under the Procurement Cloud Training Group and the Purchase Agreements Training Center. To request access to FAST, email us at access at oracloud.plus. Please include your name and contact information in the body of the email and set the title to FAST Access Request. Okay, so key topics are as follows. What is a purchase agreement? Purchase agreement types, and we give some examples as well. When are agreements created? That being within the FPC, also known as Fusion Procurement Cloud Business Process Flow. How are agreements generated? Who or what creates agreements? And then why are agreements created? So let's get started. So what is a purchase agreement? A purchase agreement is agreement between a buyer and a seller of real estate, property, company stock, or other assets as defined by Wikipedia. The person, company, or other legal entity acquiring, receiving, and purchasing the property, stock, or other assets is referred to as the buyer, and the disposing, conveying, or selling the assets is referred to as the seller. So the Wikipedia purchase agreement really aligns with the contract. In Fusion, the purchase agreement does as well, but it's the software construct that enforces some of the controlling elements. So which business unit this agreement is for, uh, a min, a max at a line or a header level, etc. But it's the enforcing construct for that paper contract. Okay, so purchase agreement types. There can be many different types created, but there's really two main types and they're characteristically different with it, regardless of what you call them with Infusion. So you have agreements that have lines and you have agreements that do not have lines. So a BPA agreement, like, like excuse me, a blanket purchase agreement, which is a BPA, has lines and those lines they define items, goods, or services. They define the attributes for those items, price, categorization, etc. They define any discounts for each of those goods or services at the line level. They define a start date and potentially an end date. And they link those lines to purchase orders and requisitions. A contract purchase agreement has no lines. If you think about a purchase not having lines, it's counterintuitive. It's essentially saying that the lines are too numerous or unknown to be listed on the agreement. So if you do all of your legal work for this particular matter with that particular law firm, or if you're going to buy through Amazon, so you're going to buy a bunch of something, but you do not, it's not defined at this time, you can use a single tag, which is this agreement ID for your purchase orders. So when you use a CPA or contract purchase agreement with no lines, you're not going to define the items, meaning it's also known as wide open. It will have a defined start date. It links to purchase orders. And technically you can also have some max and some other controls. And the control that's very important for both of these is also to be able to auto generate your orders. So next up, when are agreements created? So this is our basic FPC or again, Fusion Procurement Cloud process flow. On the top, there is the purchasing service. 
And on the bottom, number two, there is the sourcing service. So in a purchasing service, requesters add to cart, submit for approval, autogen POs, and requesters receive at Docker desk. When you do not have an item, that's when you engage procurement or what's really sourcing to find a source for that particular request. That's also when you create the agreement. So on the bottom where it says register, then go to non-financial contracts, source or negotiate, build the purchase level contract, and then you have an agreement from there. You don't have to do all of those steps, but most often you will have an agreement and you will certainly have an agreement if you're going to enable content catalogs that are searched and can be purchased in self-service. Lastly, it's just worth noting that even within the self-service purchasing, you don't create an agreement, but you will still likely use an agreement. Okay, next up, how are agreements created? Agreements are created in three different ways. First, as you see in the image on the left, they can be manually created. Second, they can be created from within a sourcing event. And third, they can be created from contracts. Next, who creates agreements? Well, there's indirect and direct. Indirectly, requesters create agreements. They don't actually create the agreement, but they do often create the requisition that creates the agreement indirectly. But buyers and contract administrators, depending on security, but most often will also have the responsibility and the access to create agreements manually, as well as through contracts and sourcing events. Lastly, why are agreements created? Well, as we've talked about, there's any number of different reasons, but here's seven that are important and constant or continuous or popular. First is to control, as we've said, the BUs that that particular agreement or its content that it's governing, control the BOs, BUs it's exposed to, meaning that can use it. The second is to auto-generate orders. The third is to provide notification. These particular agreements will allow time-based or consumption-based notification. The fourth, as we talked about earlier, limitations on dollars or time. The fifth is to provide what is called definitional items. If you want to learn more about that, you want to watch our catalogs overview video. The sixth is to provide discounts. And then lastly, seven, and this is very important, is to link transactions. So if you have orders or even payments that roll to invoices that roll to orders, and to roll those back up through to contract or spend on contract, really orders on contract, then you need to have these deployed correctly and you need a consultant or an administrator that understands how that linkage works. Okay, that's it for this video. Are you ready for the next video? Well, do you understand what agreements are, when they are created, who creates them, how they are created, and why they are created? If the answer is no, then either watch again or feel free to reach out to me directly. You can see here on the left, that's my email address, and I'm always available to answer questions. If the answer is yes, great, then maybe you want to watch more video. So you can go to our playlist out on YouTube by going to YouTube and searching on AuraCloud Plus Inc. Or you can go from our website to the tool we call FAST, the Fusion Application Support Tool, and you can access the full catalog of our learn, use, configure, integrate, deploy, and support videos online. So that's it for this tutorial. We hope you found it informative and keep watching.